Hello, my name is Lasha and today I will be teaching you vocabulary lesson for advanced level. Our topic for today is organization and organizational structures. Before I start explaining um, organizational structures, let me explain the word organization to you. Organization, it is a group of people who are organized together for, to work for the same purpose. Uh, let me write it for you. Organization, so a group of people who work together for the same purpose. They are organized or grouped together. Um, I can give you an example like this. Uh, there are three different types of organizations. Generally, we divide organization in three different types. Uh, first one is governmental organization. Second one is non-governmental organization. And third one is private uh, organizations. But usually for private sector, we say companies, not organization. So we have governmental organizations, non-governmental organizations, and private companies. So, what's the difference between them? Of course, uh, governmental organizations, it is um, organizations or bodies who is responsible for uh, managing the country. Um, we can say that uh, Parliament, for example, is governmental organization or all the ministries, uh, let's say Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Economics, Ministry of um, Labor, Social uh, Issues and Health. These are all governmental organizations. So they are responsible for managing the country. We don't need many governmental organizations. Uh, as for non-governmental organizations, these are organizations which don't belong to government uh, and they are non-for-profit organizations. So non-governmental organizations goal is not to make profit but they want to um, achieve something. For example, they have goal to uh, keep our nature as it is, or maybe their goal can be to help some people, help some vulnerable people. Uh, the short form for non-governmental organizations is NGO. It is very commonly used. So non-governmental organizations you can see also as NGO in some um, materials and sources. Um, the biggest non-governmental organization, one of the biggest non-governmental organizations, I can say, is um, FFA in America. It is Future Farmers of America. It's non-governmental organization. So I will write this example for you. FFA is a very successful NGO in the United States of America. So FFA, it is Future Farmers uh, of America. Uh, it's a non-governmental organization. It is not for profit, uh, but their goal is to teach people agriculture and to help students, um, high school students mostly, to learn about this subject. And they have a lot of organizations and organ uh, activities involved with uh, farming and agriculture. As for private companies, probably all of you understand, they do not belong to government, they belong to private uh, or individuals, and their main goal is to make profit. Let me give you an example for this. Uh, private companies
main goal is to get profit because they are profit organizations okay uh, let me change font so that everything has the same font Okay, I think this one is easier for you to see clearly. So once we have discussed organization and the types of organization, now let me talk about uh, the structures of organization. Organization structure is uh, the description and uh, how the companies or the organizations are managed who is responsible for which function and how people are reported to each other. So let me write it for you, organizational structure. So the meaning of this word organizational structure is um, how people are grouped within the organization, who is responsible for what and who is whose boss, okay? So, uh, who reports to who? Organizational structure, we can say also another word which has absolutely the same meaning, and this word is org chart. Org, short form for organization, and chart. Okay. I can say that organizational structure is one of the key factors in the success of company. I will write the same example for you. Organizational structure plays key role in the success of company. It is definitely very important what kind of uh, organizational structure the company has uh, and it really plays the key role uh, in its success. Let me describe and teach you some types of organizational structures. There are mainly six different types, but today I will discuss some of them with you. The first type of structure that I would like to discuss with you is hierarchical structure. This type of organizational structure, we can also uh, say another name for it, uh, it is called vertical structure. So everybody has one boss, one clear manager, and everyone is responsible for one thing. Um, for example, if we look over here, financial manager reports to finance team, maybe finance team director or manager. So all these people in red, they have their manager who is finance team leader. Then people in blue, they have their manager, who, which is technical team uh, department manager, probably or director and so on. OK, so everything is very clear and there is hierarchical structure. This is usually uh, used by a lot of companies and I th guess uh, this is the oldest uh, form of organizational structures. The next one that I would like to discuss with you is horizontal structure or another name for this is flat structure. In this type of uh, structure usually we don't have many levels. We don't have uh, a lot of levels and we have uh, people directly reporting to the director or maybe there can be only one intermediate role between employees and the director. So it is like horizontal or it is flat. It does not go to many levels down but it is usually one or two levels only. Um, this kind of structure is usually used by small companies or um, new companies, startup companies, we can say. 
Um, it has some good things about it. For example, if you uh, want to get some uh, approval, you don't need many levels and uh, many layers of approval. You just need approval from one person, that's it. Uh, but if the company becomes bigger and the company has uh, many different uh, functions, then it uh, becomes very difficult for one person to manage all these different uh, functions. So if company becomes bigger, they usually change this horizontal structure to other types of uh, organizational structure. The next one that I would like to discuss with you is matrix structure. So as you see here, it's not very uh, clear structure. I mean, uh, it, there is not only one type of structure used. Uh, people have sometimes more than one boss because people are grouped in a matrix. A matrix, probably you understand uh, the meaning of the word. As you see here, for example, this guy, Mark, uh, he has two subordinates, this girl and this person. But if we look at this person, she reports to Mark and at the same time she reports to the president of the company. Okay, do you understand? So this is the difference between other types of structure and matrix structure that person is uh, reporting to not only one person, sometimes to two or three or different, uh, many different uh, people, depending on their job. Uh, the next type of structure that we will discuss is network structure. Probably you understand the network structure. It is kind of structure when the company has a big network and they have maybe different branches. And um, as you see from this picture, we can see that here we have got some blue thing. So this can be separate. Then we have here ping and there is also many different units or divisions over here. This kind of structure uh, has some good things about it. Uh, for example, uh, one advantage of this type of structure is that uh, usually these units are very decentralized and they can make a lot of decisions by themselves. They don't need to ask everything to the group director or the president. Okay, so this is good thing about this structure and sometimes it is necessary for companies to have this kind of structure. The next one that we will discuss is divisional structure. Divisional structure is when we have different divisions within the same company. Uh, for example, let's say it's a car manufacturing company and there can be different divisions. There can be uh, car parts division, there can be different division for uh, flats, fl uh, tires, I mean, uh, and um, there can be maybe a third division which is responsible for glass materials. So all these divisions will have every function separately. Okay, so uh, glass products division will have its uh, accounting department and its uh, financial uh, marketing and other departments and uh, let's say another part which is um, another division can be rubber materials division and this department may have its own accounting finance marketing and other departments okay So these are all the organizational structures that I wanted to discuss with you. Now I will show you one example. I have found organizational structure of Renault. It is uh, from 2016. Some things might have uh, changed in it. But in 2016, Renault groups organizational structure looked like this.
it could not fit one page, so it is divided into two pages in this document. So this is the left part, and then we have here the right part. What do you think? What kind of structure is used in Reno or was used in 2016? If you have any ideas, can you please provide your ideas in comments on our YouTube channel? Also, I would like to tell you that um, starting from yesterday, you can watch us and follow our videos on our Facebook and Twitter accounts as well. Please don't forget to subscribe to our accounts and our pages. Okay, Machinist thinks that it is divisional structure. Probably in real life, um, this company, Renault, has divisional structure, but in this uh, photo, I don't think that it is divisional structure. Maybe it looks like matrix or network more, because if you see here, we have some region. So there is um, vice president for Africa, Middle East and India region. Then we have chairman for Eurasia region and etc. So matrix, I think, is good answer for it. Or we can also say that it is maybe network structure. Okay, let's continue our lesson and now let's talk about the <clears throat> important things about organizations. Next word that I would like to discuss with you is industry. I have chosen this word because a lot of my students in Turkey use the word incorrectly. They don't use the word correctly. Industry, it is um, a group of one product manufacturing companies. So for manufacturing or servicing, not only manufacturing, for example, all companies who produce cars together, we can call it the industry. Okay, it is not only one company, but it is all the companies within this uh, product. So all companies who produce cars will be car manufacturing industry. Uh, as for example, I can provide you like this, tourism industry has faced a lot of difficulties due to coronavirus. Yes, definitely. The whole industry, not just one company in tourism industry, but all the companies have faced problems because of coronavirus. Nobody uh, wants to go for travel now. That's why they have problems. Next word that I would like to discuss with you is department. Because you know that in every company or organization we have different departments. Department, it is a big uh, group which is responsible for one specific uh, function in the company. For example, I can say that in our company we have five departments. Uh, HR, Human Resources, Finance, Marketing, Operations and administration. Okay, so these five different functions 
They are called departments. Then we have something a little bit smaller than departments. This usually we call unit. So unit is part of department, more specific, let's say. For example, we can say that in marketing department, we have three units, market research, advertising, um, and third unit maybe can be um, R&D, research and development. Um, every company is individual, so it means they are different from each other, so they can have different structure and they can have different functions. Uh, for example, some people may say now that uh, research and development, it should not be part of market marketing department. Yeah, uh, it can be true, but in some companies you may see that research and development unit is part of marketing department. Then another word that we have is uh, section or division. They have almost similar meanings. Section or division, it is again a part of the organization and they usually have uh, more freedom than departments or units. Uh, it can be maybe smaller or it can also be bigger than department. Uh, in different countries you will see uh, these uh, words used differently. But usually what we need to know about division is that they have more freedom than other uh, parts of the organization. Okay, And uh, my example can be something like this. Um, Our manufacturing glass manufacturing division is located in China. Okay, just an example. I don't know why, but today my word is changing the font from time to time. Okay. So, we have learned so far industry, department, unit, and division or section. Next thing that I would like to discuss with you is related to people and it's related to managers. Now in various organizations you will see different names used and it's not very clear the difference between them but I will try to explain to you in easy way uh, first of all, we need to start with the word boss. Uh, the word boss, as far as I know, in Turkey it is used a little bit uh, differently. It uh, usually means the owner of the company in Turkey, but this is not the correct definition of boss. Boss is a person who is your direct supervisor. Uh, for example, I work at uh, Just English as a teacher and my boss is teacher's coordinator, not the owner of the company, but the person who is my direct supervisor. This person is my boss.
Now, when we are talking about uh, boss and uh, manager or supervisor, we need to use uh, and we need to know two different types. Okay? We have direct supervisor and indirect supervisor. Now, what's the difference between direct supervisor and indirect supervisor is that Direct supervisor is someone who you are directly reporting to. Indirect supervisor is uh, a person that is responsible for your function, but you are not directly or daily reporting to this person. Uh, I will write some examples and then maybe you can understand it uh, better. Now imagine I'm a HR manager of a company, let's say I'm HR manager for um, HP computer company of Turkey. So If I'm HP Turkey's HR manager, my direct supervisor will be probably the CEO of the company. This is the person who I'm responsible and reporting to. And indirect supervisor will be global HP's HR manager. Okay? We can use uh, different names for direct supervisor and indirect supervisor as well. We can say direct supervisor as line manager. And indirect supervisor, another name that we can use is uh, functional manager. Okay, I hope you understand the difference between these two words. Uh, another word that I would like to discuss with you is uh, manager. Manager is a person who manages a group of people and a function. So. It can be uh, the department manager or it can be uh, the manager of unit as well. So the person who is responsible for some people, who uh, is managing a group of people, this uh, person we can call a manager. Our manager is a very lovely person. Okay. The next word that I would like to describe to you is director. Director is uh, higher level than manager. So director we can use maybe for uh, the whole company, but uh, if company is very, very big, then in the departments you can see department director. Sometimes this can also be used Department manager is more popular than department director, but sometimes you might see this as well. The company's director has a big experience in the um, industry. Next word that I would like to discuss with you is chief. Pay attention, guys, this is not chef, this is chief. Uh, the spelling is different. If I delete I, it would become chef. 
which we know all is the person who cooks and but if I write chief this is different chief um, it means the biggest the best um, person for uh, something it uh, is used in two different ways one way that it is used is uh, for a person who is responsible for a very big organization or company or uh, a lot of functions. We can say, for example, chief executive officer. Um, and another usage of chief can be if we have uh, in our, let's say, engineering department, we have 10 engineers and some of them have more experience than others. So the person who has the most experience, uh, we can say chief engineer for this person. So this person does not manage any group, but he is the best in his job with his experience, knowledge, and etc. Um, I will give you example with the first meaning. So these are short forms, abbreviations for chief executive officer. This is like the director of the company, chief financial officer. So uh, the director of finance, chief operations officer, director of operations and chief informations officer. Usually you will see in the companies CEO, CFO and CO, but in some Modern companies, we also have CIO, Chief Information Officer, um, IT Department, Head of IT Department, or the Director of IT Department. It can be called CIO. If this is very important role for the company, they can have Chief for this function. What else have we got uh, for today? Mm, we can also learn one word, which is head. It's kind of same with uh, the manager, but it is used more commonly with governmental organizations. In governmental organizations, usually we don't say manager, but we say head. Um, I will give you an example like this. Um, in Georgia, I used to work at the Ministry of Finance for two years, I think, I worked there. And I will give you an example about our ministry. So the head of my department was Sergo Nozadze. This is a person's name, okay? So it has a very similar meaning to manager, but uh, we use this mostly in governmental organizations, not in companies that much. Also, we can say that Another word um, that we use is president. We use this word for very, very big companies, okay? We don't use this for small companies. Um, let's say that Coca-Cola president is... I have no idea and I don't want to lie to you about it, so let me find who is the president of Coca-Cola. Brian Smith. Okay, so Brian Smith is the president of Coca-Cola. It is usually higher level than director. If a company becomes 
very, very big and it has many departments, many different layers, then we can say director for the department manager, we will say department director, and then next level becomes uh, president. Uh, now let's talk about people who own the company. One word that we can use for this is, of course, owner of the company. If there is only one person or two people, we will say this word. But if we have a um, big company which sells its shares on the market, then we will have shareholders. Shareholders is, are people who have little bit of ownership in the company. Our company has 1,000 shareholders. Okay, maybe there are 1,000 people who own little bit part in our company. And the owner of English Language Academy is Lasha Valadze. This is me, guys, Lasha Valadze, and I have just created this sentence as an example. I am not really the owner of some kind of academy, but I wish I was the owner for of this academy. Now let's talk about uh, people who work in different departments. What are they called? First of all, the word that we need to learn is specialist. Specialist is very common, very popular um, word that we use in the companies. It's a person who is not a manager of something and the person only does his or her job. Okay? And the person has enough knowledge, skills, and experience to do his or her job, but doesn't manage any other person. Um, there are uh, 15 specialists in our department. Okay, imagine I'm working in human resources department and we have 15 different specialists, 15 people working in my department. Now, uh, if we want to little bit uh, level up or down specialist, we can use junior specialist and we can also use senior specialist. So, junior specialist and senior specialist. Junior specialist is a person who has not enough knowledge or experience and senior specialist is a person who has more knowledge and experience than normal specialist, okay? Let's continue the same example. So we have 15 specialists. Uh, we also have two junior specialists and three senior specialists. Uh, I will use short forms for junior specialist and senior specialist. This will be SR, senior specialist. And this one will be JR, junior specialist. The next word that I would like to discuss with you is also leading specialist and main specialist. They have almost same meaning with um, senior specialist, but they are usually used for a little bit higher level than senior specialist. Leading specialist.
or another word to use is main specialist. So the person with the biggest experience and the most knowledge we will call leading specialist or main specialist. There is one leading specialist in our department. Some companies prefer to use different word other than specialist. Um, they may use expert. These can have exactly same meaning with specialist. And also, in that case, we will have junior expert, senior expert, leading expert, and etc. Um, and in some other organizations, you might also see the word officer, which can also have the same meaning with expert. So, um, there is not a clear difference and clear understanding uh, about specialist, expert and officer, which one should be higher, which one should be lower. Mm, different companies will use them in different ways. I will write this here because they are almost same with their meaning. Specialist, expert or even officer, you might see some companies. Does anybody know what can be the name in Turkish for specialist or expert? If you have any ideas, you can write in comments. And meanwhile, let me continue. Okay, thank you, Makinist. Uzman. Okay, good. I will talk about three levels of management in the organizations now. We have senior management. We have middle management. And we have lower level management. We can also say senior manager, middle manager and lower level manager. So senior management is uh, a group of people who is responsible for bigger things and bigger departments. Then in, we have middle management, who is maybe responsible for units, but not the whole department. And lower level management can be, for example, team leader or shift leader. Um, let's say that we have um, some kind of manufacturing company and our company works in shifts. So shift manager will be lower level manager, okay? Uh, the middle manager will be maybe the department uh, manager of uh, manufacturing department, for example, and senior management will be probably CEO, CFO and COO, okay? I hope you understand the meaning between the senior, middle and lower level management. So it is level by level. People on the top of the organization, they are senior management, the one who is in the middle, we call middle management, and the last part we will call lower level management. Let's see what we have learned so far. So we have discussed organization types and organizational structure types, then we've learned some words which um, sometimes look very similar to each other and people make mistakes with them, industry, department, unit and section. Then we've learned different types of managers and different words that we can use for people who manage some functions, uh, departments or units. We've learned two words for the owners and we also learned what we call for people who are not managers. And finally, we've learned three different words for different levels of management. Um, one word that I would like to add that we have not learned is assistant. 
I think all of you understand the meaning of this word. When I worked at a bank, I had a personal assistant. Assistant is um, a person who is responsible for very uh, low-level jobs, let's say, maybe for calling people and uh, answering emails uh, and uh, arranging some meetings, these kind of things. Assistant does not make any uh, big decisions in the company. Usually, we don't use the word helper, machinist, we say assistant. At the organizations, we will not use the word helper. Yes, the person who helps me with my job, so I'm responsible for something, and um, I use my brain more, so I do some brain work, but the assistant does, let's say, low-level things, low-level jobs. I think we can have a break now for 15 minutes and 15 minutes later I will be back with you and we will learn some more words and also look at some exercises regarding uh, the vocabulary. See you in 15 minutes.